This video is for section 9.2 on perimeter and also for section 9.3 on area, volume, and surface area. So first we'll talk about perimeter. We have both perimeter and circumference. They both mean the distance around a figure. So the distance around a non-circular figure is called the perimeter. The distance around a circle is called the circumference. Perimeter is always measured in units of length, such as feet, inches, or meters. First, let's look at the perimeter of a rectangle. If we have a rectangle, then we have the length on the two sides and the width on the other two sides. And all we're trying to do to find the perimeter is measure the distance all the way around the outside of this. So we're going to start out with the length. We have another length down here, and then we have the two widths and we just want to add those four numbers up. So another way we could think about this, since we have two lengths and two widths, we could write it out like this, and this gives us a formula. The P stands for perimeter, the capital L stands for length, and the capital W stands for width. So we have P equals 2L plus 2W. Now if we have a square, that just means that we have a rectangle where all four sides are the same length. Another way we could think about this is that we're just adding up the length of that side four times. So our perimeter equals four times the length of the side. So we have the formula P equals 4S. For a triangle, if we know all three sides, then really all we're doing is just adding up those three lengths. So we have the A is the one side, the B is another side, and the C is the third side and we're just adding those three up. And this is true for the perimeter of any type of polygon. So we can just add up all the sides to find the perimeter. Now if we have some other figures, one that you will see in the homework is called a regular polygon. This is just a many-sided figure whose sides are all the same length. So this could be a triangle, a square, a pentagon, a hexagon, and so on. In this picture we have a hexagon because it has six sides and if this is a regular polygon then we only know, need to know the length of one side in order to find the perimeter. So what this means is that each side of this figure is A units long. So to get the perimeter we would just add up A six times and that's the same as taking six times A. Now for other types of figures all we need to do is add up the lengths of the sides to get the perimeter. So here's another type of figure we might run into. This one is actually a trapezoid, but the idea is that if we know the lengths of all four sides, we just add those up to get our perimeter. Here are some examples. We want to find the perimeter of each of the following. So in this one, we have a rectangle. So that means if we know that this is three inches, then we have three inches over here also. And if this is five inches, then this one is five inches. So we could say here that our length L is 5 inches, our width W is 3 inches, and then we could just add up the four numbers or we could use that formula we had since this is a rectangle. The formula again was that the perimeter equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So for this one, we would have 2 times our 5 inches plus 2 times our 3 inches. Notice I'm leaving the units in here. If we take 2 times 5, we get 10 inches. If we take 2 times 3, we get 6 inches. And then we're just adding those together to get a total of 16 inches. Now for this one, again, this is really a trapezoid, but all we need to think about is just adding up our four values. So our perimeter here equals, and let's start with this one. We have 25 feet there, and then if we go to this one next, 23 feet. If we keep going around that same direction, then the next one is 18 feet. And finally, we have 23 feet. So we're just adding these four numbers together. 25 plus 23 is 48. And so that's those two added together. And 18 plus 23 would be 41 feet. So now if we add 48 and 41, we get 89 feet. 
altogether. Now we have a regular polygon. We know that the length of each of the sides is 3 meters. Now this one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sides. Which actually makes it a pentagon. But that just means that we have 5 sides that are each 3 meters. So we could write it out this way and add up the 3 meters 5 times. Or we could take 5, since we know there are 5 sides, times our 3 meters. Either way, we end up with a total of 15 meters. Now, if we have a circle, instead of saying perimeter, we call it the circumference. It still just means the distance all the way around the outside of the circle. And one thing we know is that if we have a circle, then the circumference divided by the diameter always gives us the same ratio. And this is the number pi. It's approximately equal to 22 sevenths or 3.14. We'll use both of these values in the homework problems. So if we're trying to find the circumference of a circle, we have two formulas depending on what information we know. If we know the radius of the circle, which goes from the center to the outside of the circle. Then, to get our circumference, we can take 2 times pi times our radius. If we know the diameter, which does, goes all the way across the circle, then we can just take pi times the diameter to get our circumference. And remember here that diameter is 2 times the radius. So it's the same as twice the radius. So we've got two different formulas depending on the information that we have. We can either use this one, the circumference equals 2 times pi times r, or this one, the circumference equals pi times the diameter. Let's do some examples. Now in this one, we're going to find both the exact value, which will have pi in it, and then also an approximation, and in this one we're going to use an approximation for pi that's 3.14, and we want to round to the nearest hundredth. In this one we have the radius, and remember our formula in that case was that the circumference is 2 times pi times the radius. So this would be 2 times pi times r. And now we just have a replacement value because our radius is r. So we're going to put in 7 feet in place of the r. And now remember, since all of these are multiplication, we can switch the order of these. So this is the same as 2 times 7 times pi feet. All we did there was switch the positions of the 7 and the pi, so we get 14 times pi feet. This is our exact answer. Now if we want to find an approximation, then we would use our 3.14 in place of pi, and we would just have to multiply this out. We're counting decimal places since we're multiplying with a decimal. We had no decimal places here, we had two here, so we're going to have two decimal places in our answer. So our approximation is going to be 43.96 feet. And notice we came out with our answer to the hundredth place and we were supposed to round to the nearest hundredth. So this is our approximation. Now what if we have the diameter instead of the radius? Then we're using the other formula, which just says the circumference is pi times the diameter. So now we just have to take pi times 84 meters. And again, we can switch the order of these numbers since they're multiplied. So we could write this as 84 pi meters. That's our exact answer. Now to get an approximation, we're 
we're going to substitute the 3.14 in place of the pi. And now we have to multiply 84 times 3.14. Here's our answer, and now we need to put our decimal point in. This had no decimal places. This one had two decimal places. So this is going to have two decimal places. And notice how I'm using this wiggly equals sign. That tells us we're using an approximation. And again, this one came out already to the hundredth place, so we don't need to do any rounding. Here's just a table that shows you several different types of figures and gives you their perimeter formulas or in the case of the circle the circumference formulas. Now let's talk about area, volume, and surface area. So first area. If we're looking at a rectangle then we can see this pretty easily. Area is measured in square units and a square unit means it's a square with one unit on each side. So this would be our square unit. We have one unit length on this side and one unit of length on this side. If we start with a rectangle that has a length of three units and a width of two units, we could draw this out and separate our sides into the different units. So this one has three, this one has two, and now each of these squares in here is one square unit. So we could count how many there are. Well, there are six. Another way to get 6 would just be to multiply the 2 by the 3. So area for a rectangle is actually just the length times the width. Now some area formulas. For a rectangle, as we just saw, the area is just the length times the width. And again, this is going to be in square units, which we would write this way. Now if we have a parallelogram, a parallelogram means that opposite sides are parallel and that they're the same length. So for a parallelogram, we have to look at two different things. We look at what we call the base, which is just the length of the side on the bottom. And then we look at the height, which goes from the bottom side up to the top side. We could get this the same way as if we had a rectangle, since the parallelogram is, is sort of like a rectangle that's shoved over on one side. So our area formula is a lot the same as it is for a rectangle. The only difference is that we call this the base and the height instead of the length and the width. And also notice that our height is not actually the length of one of these sides. It's the height from the bottom of the parallelogram to the top. Now for a triangle, actually we could get a triangle by taking a parallelogram and splitting it in half like this. So what that tells us, if we already know if we had a parallelogram and knew the base and the height and used that to get a triangle, then our area would just be half of that. So the area for a triangle turns out to be one half the base times the height. And we still talk about the base and the height just like we did with parallelograms. So the base is the length of the bottom side and the height goes from that bottom side up to the top corner of our triangle. So here's our height right here couple more area formulas. If we have a square, this one's easy. We can think of this actually as a rectangle. We could make this the length and this the width, and then we're just multiplying those two together. But since they're the same for a square, then we just end up with the length of the side squared. And finally, a trapezoid. A trapezoid, again, has two sides that are parallel, but they're different lengths. And then the other two sides are the same length, but they're going out in opposite directions. So for a trapezoid, we actually have two bases. We have the one that's longer is the capital B, the one that's shorter is the small b, and then we have the height also. And we use all three of those numbers to find our area. So our area for a trapezoid is one half the sum of the two bases times the height. And a helpful hint for area, it's always going to be measured in square units. And when you're finding the area, 
make sure that all the measurements that you have are in the same units before you try to do any multiplication or other calculations. Let's do some examples. Here we have a rectangle and we have a length of 5 inches, a width of 3 inches. So that means our area is length times width, which is 5 inches times 3 inches. We can multiply the 5 and the 3. Here we can write this two different ways. We can say square inches, where we write it like this with an exponent, or we can say 15 square inches. Now in this one we have a trapezoid, and remember for the trapezoid we had the three different things. We had the small base, the big base, and in this one, I didn't draw this very well, but the 23 feet here is the height. So our formula for the trapezoid was one half times the sum of the two bases times the height. So this is going to be one half. Our big B was 25 feet. Our small base was 18 feet. And our height was 23 feet. And here we get into order of operations again. We need to simplify inside the parentheses first before we do anything else. If we add the 25 and the 18, we get 43 feet. And now we're going to do multiplication from left to right. So first we have the 1 half times the 43 feet. That would give us 43 halves feet. We still have that times the 23 feet. And if we multiply 43 times 23, we get 989. Now notice we still have our 2 down there. Our units come out to be in square feet. Now last of all we have a triangle. So in this one, remember the base is the length of that bottom side, so our 3 meters would be the base. And here our height is 2 meters. The area for a triangle was one half the base times the height. So we have our base is three meters, our height is two meters. And let's do our multiplication from left to right. So one half times three is three halves. Now we have three halves times two. Let's write this out this way. And we know our units are going to be square meters in the end. So if we look at this, we have a 2 each place, so we can cancel. We end up with 3 over 1. That's just the same as 3. So we end up with an answer of 3 square meters. Now for the area of a circle, again, this formula uses pi. And if we know the radius, then our area is just pi times r squared. Here's another place where we'll have to use the order of operations and do our exponential operation first. So let's start out with a circle with a radius of 8 inches. Here's our area formula. Now we're going to replace the r with 8 inches. And again, we have to do that exponential operation first before we do any multiplication. So 8 squared is going to be 64. Our units are going to come out to be square inches, so we might as well just write that in there. Now if we want an exact answer, we can leave it this way, but let's change these around so that we have 64 first and then the pi. So our exact answer would be 64 pi square inches. If we wanted approximation, again we could use either 22 sevenths or 3.14 for the pi, and then we could get an approximate answer. Now what if we have a circle with a diameter of 8 inches? Well notice we don't have a formula up here for area using the diameter, so the only thing we can do 
is to figure out how to get the radius if we know the diameter. And remember that the diameter is twice the radius. So that means if we know the diameter and we want to get the radius, we're going to have to divide the diameter in half. So the radius actually equals half of the diameter. So in this one, half of 8 inches would be 4 inches for our radius. All right, so we're going back to our formula here. And now we're substituting in place of the R, we're replacing that with 4 inches. And again, we have to square that first before we can do anything else. So if we take 4 times itself, we get 16. Our units are going to be square inches. So our exact answer here would be 16 pi square inches. All right, here's another table. And again, this one has several different types of figures. And notice it gives you both the perimeter formulas and the area formulas for each one. Now let's talk about volume and surface area. Volume is actually a three-dimensional measurement. This measures the number of cubic units that fill the space of a solid. So here we're talking about having a box or a can and how much it would take to fill up the whole thing. So we could use volume to describe the amount of juice in a pitcher or the amount of concrete needed to pour a foundation for a house. Volume is always measured in cubic units, and that we can also write as units cubed. So instead of square units where we had this squared, now it's cubic units and we have this cubed. Now surface area is a little bit different thing. Here again we're talking about a solid but the surface area is the sum of all the areas of all the faces of our solid. So surface area, since it's an area, is measured in square units. Let's look at a couple types of solids and look at the volume and the surface area formulas. So if we have a rectangular solid, which is really just the same as a box, then we have three dimensions. We have height, length, and width. To get the volume, we're just going to multiply those three things together. So our volume formula for a box or a rectangular solid is just the length times the width times the height. Now for surface area, we would actually look at each surface of this box and find the area. So for example, on this one, this front surface of the box, to find the area of that, we would actually have the length times the height. So this one would be the length times the height. This surface over here, we would have the width times the height. So this one would be the width times the height. And if we look at the top face of this box up here, here we would have the length times the width. So this one would be length times width. So we have those three. Then we have the other three faces that we can't actually see in this picture. So for each one of these, there's another one on the opposite side of the box that's the same. So that gives us two of the length times the height, two of the width times the height, and two of the length times the width. So that's how we get our surface area. Let's do an example. So let's find the volume and the surface area of a rectangular solid with these dimensions. So let's just go ahead with our picture up here and write these in. If our length is 8 inches, our width is 3 inches, and our height is 9 inches. All we're going to do is use these formulas. So for the volume, we have the length times the width times the height. Our length is 8 inches, our width is 3 inches, our height is 9 inches. And again, we can change the order of these. So we actually have 8 times 3 times 9. And then really, we're taking inches times inches times inches. And that's where we get our cubic measurement. 
So we have cubic inches, or we could also write it this way. Now, 8 times 3 is 24. And if we take 24 times 9, we get 216. So our volume for this would be 216 cubic inches. Now for our surface area, let's write down this whole formula. So for the length, we're going to put in our 8 inches. Height is 9 inches. Then we have our width is 3 inches, and our height is 9 inches. And then finally we have the length, 8 inches, times the width, which is 3 inches. Okay, so in each one of these we're going to multiply the three numbers together, and then our inches, we're going to have two of these in each case, so we're going to have square inches for our units. So here we have 2 times 8 times 9, here we have 2 times 3 times 9, and in this one we have 2 times 8 times 3, and we know our units are going to be square inches. So let's see, here we have 16 times 9 plus 6 times 9 plus 16 times 3, so that gives us 144 plus 54 plus 48, and if we add those three together, that gives us 16, so we carry the 1, that's 14, carry the 1. So this gives us 246 square inches for our surface area. Now for a cube, this is just a special case of a box, really where all the, all the dimensions are the same. So our length, our width, and our height are all the same value. So really all we're doing is taking, this is length, width, and height. We're taking the same number times itself three times, which means we have that number cubed. And for the surface area, we could do the same thing. Since all the faces are going to be the same dimensions, they're all going to have the same area. So we could just figure out the area for one of those and then add them all together. And actually I just noticed this formula this should be squared instead of cubed. So that should actually be 6s squared. So let's find the volume and surface area of a cube if the sides are 4 meters. So if this is 4 meters, this is 4 meters, and this is 4 meters. So our volume is s cubed. So here we have 4 meters cubed, and if we cube 4, we end up with 64. And remember our volume is going, always going to be in cubic units. Since our unit was a meter, then we have cubic meters. And for our surface area, we have 6s squared. So we have our 4 meters squared. 4 squared gives us 16. And remember, for surface area, it's just like regular area, we get square units. So our, we'll have square meters. And 6 times 16 is 96. So we get 96 square meters. Now, what if we have a sphere? Well, we're back to something that's circular. So we're using pi again. The formula for the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds times pi times r cubed where r is our radius. And if we want the surface area, so in other words, what it would take to cover our whole sphere, that would be 4 times pi times r squared. So let's say we have a sphere that has a radius of 12 inches. And again, the radius for a sphere goes from the center of the sphere just to the outside. So for our volume, we'd have our 4 thirds times pi times our radius cubed. Our radius is 12 inches. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is our exponent. So let's write this out. 12 cubed would be 12 times 12 times 12. 
and we know our units here are going to be cubic inches. So if we have 12 times 12 times 12, I know 12 times 12 is 144. And now let's multiply this out and see what 12 cubed is. So we have 8, 8, and 2, and then 4, 4, and 1. If we add those together, we get 1,100. 1,728. So now we have 4 thirds times pi times 1,728 inches cubed. And now again we can change the order of these so we can take our 4 thirds times our 1,728 and then we have our pi on the outside. Now let's see if we can reduce this at all. If we add up the digits of 1,728 we actually get 18. So that means this is divisible by 3. So let's see, that would be... Um, that's 7. Okay, so if we divide 1728 by 3, we get 576. So now we have 4 times 576, and we have to do one more multiplication. All right, so that ends up being 2,304 pi cubic inches. Now in this problem it tells us to get an approximation using pi equal to 3 and 14 hundredths. I'm not going to do that since I'm almost out of room here, but what we would need to do in that case is replace our pi with 3.14 and then go ahead and do that multiplication and round to the nearest hundredth. Now let's do our surface area. This is 4 pi r squared. So again we're replacing our r with 12 inches. And 12 times 12, we already know, is 144. And since we're talking about surface area, we're going to have square inches as our units. So now we need to take 4 times 144. That gives us 576. We still have our pi there. So our exact answer is 576 pi square inches. And again, if we wanted our approximation, we would multiply 576 times our 3.14, multiply this out, and then round to the nearest hundredth. 